It's 2020 election year, baby, and we all know what that means. Everyone being super duper nice and civil to one another while we all ignore the other more important branch of federal government. Congress. What? Hey, peeps. Now that the four-year term has come around again, it's time we all try to remember how our weirdo election procedures work. Because it's complicated. We use a protocol slash process called the Electoral College, which is simultaneously a group of people. So, you know, at least our definitions are, are really clear. <laughs> that is correct. We do not use the popular vote, though it kind of plays a factor. But there be reasons, Harry. Let's start with the basics. What is the Electoral College? Pfft, a university that elects people? No. Basically, the Electoral College is our protocol for choosing a president. This protocol or process has three basic steps. One, the choosing of the electors. Two, the electors meet. They vote for president. Three, we all count the votes. And a, you know, leader happens. Hearing that, you might notice that there's no part where you, the actual person who is a member of the general population, votes for president. That, that's not listed in the uh, protocol. And that's because we don't actually vote for president. If you went out and voted in the last presidential election, and I hope you did. You must! It's your sacred franchise! You actually didn't vote for a candidate. You voted for their electors. Dun dun fart! What you actually did when you went and voted for a presidential candidate is participated in step number one of the Electoral College, which if you remember from roughly 60 seconds ago is both a process and a group of people. And step number one is choosing those people. God, my head looks weird in this shot. Who are these people? Why are you choosing them? They're your state electors, and you're choosing them to vote for you. You lazy, lazy son of a- Now after this is step number two, where the electors of the Electoral College actually vote for president. Wait, 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 wait. Let's take a pit stop here before we get any further. What? No! Who the hell in Troy are these so-called electors who are choosing our president? If you get online and look up what the Electoral College is, the government website explaining it will tell you that it is a process. Well, it's fibbing just a little bit, little bit, baby boo. And that's because there is an actual group of people who are chosen to make up the actual folks who are part of the Electoral College for every presidential election. Ugh. How many are there? Well, that's pretty easy. The number of electors is identical to the number of representatives your state has in Congress. So this includes your House representatives as well as your two senators. Uh-oh. My double paused on pause there. That means right now there are 538 electors in the country. And a big old 270 or more are needed to actually make a final elect... It takes 270 people to elect the president, okay? Only 270, you say? Yes. Yes, only 270, I say. That is it. That is literally the old... That is how many people it takes. And okay, I hear you. That's all well and good, but still, who are these mofos? Like, seriously, who are these people who are doing this thing? I get it. There are people. They do a thing. There's not that many of them. But who are they? Why are they the special people? Because they can fly. That's not true. The answer is much lamer than that. Choosing electors is handled in each state by a two-part process. First, the parties in each state choose what they call potential electors, which they call slates. The way this is done varies state to state, but generally it's done by nominating potential electors into slates at their state party conventions. A lot of words. Or they choose them by a vote of the state party central committee. At the end of this process, Please, each presidential candidate will have their own unique slate of potential electors who are just waiting in the wings to vote for them on election day. But before election day, they are just potential electors who don't actually do anything and aren't actually electors until we move on to <laughs> step three. Kidding! <laughs> We're still on step two because now we finally get to talk about how we literally choose the electors now that we talked about who these randos 
are. But lucky for us, step two of the electoral college process also happens to be step two of how we choose the actual electors. Ugh, as my grandmother would say, oy vey. She's drawing nasty. It's good. The day has come, we're here yet again. What insane person do we want to give an insane amount of power to? That's right. It's American Idol. No, it's election day. Ya dingus. So you go to the ballot box or whatever. Once in the voting booth, you cast your ballot for whomever, and this is how the electors are chosen. Every candidate has their own slate of potential electors in your state, but they are not your state electors yet. When we vote in the popular election, we are actually voting for the slate of people that is going to vote on our behalf for our presidential pick. So at the end of the day, a candidate receives the majority of the popular vote in your state. This means that candidate's specific slate of potential electors will now become everyone's electors for that state, becoming your official state electors. In most states, this means that all the electoral votes in your state will go to that winning candidate. Except for Nebraska and Maine. And that's that. Easy peasy, want to be friends with Yeezy. But why in the name of Laura Dern are we doing this? I just spent the better part of 10 minutes or more, I don't know, explaining how convoluted and weird our system is because it's absurd that you would need a YouTube video to figure it out when most other countries just frickin' vote for somebody and the winner wins. But instead, we're playing the world's largest game of telephone just to pick a leader. Hey, baby. You just gotta remember that the United States is basically a group of smaller states, also known as countries. And when the wrinkly old white men who were writing these rules wrote these rules, they wanted to make sure that the states with greater populations weren't the only valid decision makers when it came to choosing the executive branch of government. The Electoral College was founded to make sure that a small proportion of states didn't control most of the electoral power for the presidency. But now the Electoral College tends to favor a small number of states. <laughs> as opposed to balancing who has the power in a presidential election. The Electoral College exists so that the majority of the power doesn't lie only with the states who have the most people. But now, because of the Electoral College, we've ended up in a situation where the power for the presidential election lies with only a few states, and those states happen to have far fewer people. So it represents a disproportionate amount of power given the number of states with that power and a disproportionate amount of power given the population size. The system was made to prevent the more populous states from being the sole deciders of the presidency. But the system now has resulted in less populous states being the decision makers instead. The problem here is that the system is made to create balance and balance no longer exists within the system. So what do we do? Go only to popular voting? I don't know. I don't know if we need to abolish the Electoral College as much as we maybe need to change how it functions. What is a function? All right, bye. Hey y'all, if you had a good time and you liked the video, please subscribe, give it the old like, give it the old comment. YouTube really cares about people liking videos again and they like comments, it shows engagement, so you know. If you want to support the channel, go for it. That'd be sweet. If you don't, I don't know, watch, watch something else. I think Jenna Marbles has something new out now.